Last week, the Massachusetts Board of Higher Education gave its unanimous approval to the selection by the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees of Dr. Laura Douglas as BCC's next president. Dr. Douglas is slated to become BCC's fourth president this July, following the retirement of Dr. John Spraga, who has served in that role for the last 17 years. We're pleased now to be joined on the phone by Dr. Laura Douglas. Dr. Douglas, welcome and congratulations. Thanks, it's an honor to speak with you today. I'm so excited about my new position and uh, I, I am just um, learning so much and trying to learn so much and uh, wanna be ready for that day one in July. Well, you still got some time, which is a good thing, but let me ask you, first of all, for those who are unaware, give us a brief introduction to Dr. Laura Douglas and why you were attracted to the position of president of BCC. Sure. Well, first of all, please feel free to call me Laura. Thank you. Um, uh, I think as colleagues, we uh, we love to go by our first names. And um, yeah, so I have uh, had had a goal for quite some time to become a community college president. Uh, and right now, I'm at Des Moines Area Community mm -hmm. College. I am a provost of uh, one of the. Des Moines Area Community College campuses. It's the second largest campus in our district, and it serves the downtown Des Moines area. It's a very diverse college campus, uh, and we've done some amazing things. It's a very innovative place to learn and grow, uh, and uh, I've really, really enjoyed my time here very, very much and learned a lot. And one of the things that very much attracts me to Bristol Community College uh, is the, the level of innovation and the uh, great ideas and the great success rates that the college has had. You know, it's really a gift when a president can walk in and build on the successes uh, before her, and I feel very blessed about that. I think there's a lot of opportunity in the um, Bristol County area with uh, the economic changes that are happening, uh, the workforce development in the region, uh, BCC has done a great job in that area, and I'm very excited to carry on that tradition and, and really work to develop um, those industries, uh, promote education to prepare that workforce uh, for some of those new areas mm. in STEM and logistics and manufacturing, life and biosciences, wind energy, uh, et cetera. So there's, a, there's really a lot there. Um, you asked me a little bit about more about who, who's Laura Douglas. Um, my background is that I I have a, a bachelor's in social welfare from the University of Southern Maine. I'm originally uh, from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I was born in Massachusetts and, and then later spent my um, middle school and high school years in northeastern Connecticut, just about an hour away from Fall River. Uh, went to University of Southern Maine in New England, uh, got my bachelor's degree, uh, went on and worked in Japan. Uh, for a number of years, came back to the United States, uh, earned my master's in international administration from the School for International Training in Vermont, and uh, then went into uh, education and uh, higher education. I was um, an international coordinator for a school, a uh, private school in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and then was recruited to be the dean of the Japan campus for State University of New York in uh, Toyama, Japan. So after that gig, my first <laughs> time with a community college, I felt as though I had hit that perfect spot in my career where I had found my home. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a perfect combination of higher education plus uh, what I had learned in social work, how, helping people help themselves. Right. And I think the community college does such a great job in, in providing mm -hmm. all these multiple on-ramps to higher education and skill development. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided that I wanted to go on and be a leader in higher education, and that's when I went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Uh, and then after that, became a vice president of instructional and student services and chief academic officer at a uh, community college in North Carolina and then made it to Des Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. So that tells you a little bit about my uh, background and experience. Mm. Let me ask you, the BCC service area has traditionally had low levels of educational attainment. Uh, you know, this is a very demographically diverse region, and uh, some of our, our individuals have fallen behind in terms of getting quality education. What have you learned um, in Des Moines and in your experiences to help meet those challenges here at, at BCC? 
Sure, that's a great question. Um, we've been very innovative here in Des Moines, and we've had to be because we, we face the same challenges. Uh, our students who are coming from uh, specific ethnic groups, low income, students with disabilities, students who have maybe limited English proficiency, those are great examples of uh, students in our area who have found it very difficult to get to college, uh, maybe even graduate from high school, and also complete college. So we've done a lot of work uh, in uh, helping our high school age students and their families understand the importance of college. We do a lot of special outreach. Uh, we have, uh, I think, refined this uh, strategy of what we call family nights. We have a Latino family night, uh, Asian Pacific Islander family night, and an African family night every year. Uh, we've been written up on our successes with those programs. We're we're planning for African Family Night right now, which mm -hmm. will, will happen next month. We'll have 150 or more uh, African um, uh, people, new Iowans from African nations come, maybe representing 24 or 25 different nations. And we will help them understand uh, why school is important, mm -hmm. why college is important, why DMACC, why the community college plays such a pivotal role. Uh, because these are families, all of these uh, group share something very much in common. They expect their children to help support the family, and they expect their children to help send money back to their relatives in their home countries. Mm. And so they often think, well, how can they go to college? They need to work. They need to help right. support the family. And what we lay out to the parents and sisters and brothers and everybody is, what will a college degree do for you? Mm. So if you're making minimum wage or let's even say eight or nine dollars an hour this is what you make in the course of the year without any benefits but with a community college degree your starting salary is going to be about in the forty thousand dollar range depending of course on the on the pathway the degree but all of a sudden you know the the light bulb goes off and we right. say you know you can do this part-time and you can get uh, financial aid to do this and you can um, and in no time, you'll be earning at such an important rate, and you'll have a 401k, mm -hmm. and you'll have health care benefits, mm -hmm. and your employer may also then give you tuition benefits to allow you to continue and finish that bachelor's snowball degree if that's your goal. You right. It's the snowball effect. So that's one of the things that we've done very successfully right. um, as, as a good, really good example mm. um, of just we, we don't often in higher education take the time to tell people how it works mm -hmm. and, uh, and let them know that there's a limit on Pell Grants, you know, the federal financial mm -hmm. aid, and how do they manage that? Um, and that kind of dovetails into another strategy that we use. We do a lot of proactive advising with our students. Right. So our students have one advisor throughout their entire college experience at DMACC and, uh, well, at my campus anyway, at the urban campus. And then we also help them with the financial aspect mm. of, of how are they going to afford college and if their goal is to continue on, how do they manage that? So do they really need to take all those Pell, use all those Pell dollars? Do they really need to take out all those loans? You mm -hmm. know, is, so we, we do a lot of work like that to really help them get to their end goal and complete college. Right. Let me ask you, tell us your approach in creating a culture in which community college are viewed as a viable first step in higher education rather than a last resort. There's, this, you know, there's that stigma of community college. How have you dealt with that? Yes, we often get that. You know, so often people call us the, the stepchild mm -hmm. uh, in higher education. And I think we've been very successful in, in, in trying to bust that image. Certainly our family nights are a really good way to do that and we because we show them how that savings can be done um, and we also talk about critical success factors um, so uh, with our legislators and uh, and and when we're doing our our outreach in the community uh, we often talk about what you need to do in high school in order to be successful and graduate with a college degree mm. and a lot of people don't understand that when you attend a community college, you have a greater chance of graduating from a four-year institution. Mm -hmm. And when we tell parents and we tell the students that, the light bulb goes off, and they say, well, why is that? And we say, well, you know, for a lot of different reasons. One, we have smaller class sizes. 
Uh, we, you'll have much more individual attention. Uh, you have room to experiment uh, because tuition is a little cheaper. So if you decide to change your, your major, and typical students today will change their major five times, mm -hmm. uh, it's okay. You're, you may get off track a little bit, but it's not like you're going to lose thirty or $40,000 in one year because you decide to go in a completely different direction and wow. add another year of college. So uh, I think those are some of the things that we've tried to do. The other thing is that we talk about is the mid-skills gap. And we show people that uh, that lots of times, you know, parents will say, well, you know, like HVAC, for example, right? Um, um, heating and ventilation and air conditioning. Wow, that's, you know, that's a tough job. And, you know, there's a lot of that physical activity here and and um, you know it's very technical mm -hmm. I want I want my son or daughter to to study something else you know maybe become a teacher or do this or do that and what they don't recognize is that with that two-year degree they are they come out of the chute and are making substantially more money and right. we talk about those gaps we have huge retirements in in a lot of our in a lot of different areas a lot of different technical areas mm -hmm. and we can't fill those jobs because we don't have trained and licensed individuals so we try to provide those aha moments mm -hmm. and also talk about how with our dual enrollment programs where students are learning in the high schools and earning college credit that they can actually minimize that time in school sure. um, and and then if they they Let's say they want to go on to HVAC and, mm -hmm. and study and, and, and become um, an expert in that field. How later on, if they, if, if they took one of our entrepreneurial um, programs, they could then elevate that into you know, running an entire company and, um, and, and doing something on a, on a much larger scale. Right. So you just have to put the possibilities in front of people and then show your outcomes. You right. just need to show that your students are graduating and doing great things and earning at a certain level. Mm. Let me ask you, BCC has campuses uh, in each of its urban areas in Fall River here, New Bedford, Attleboro, Totten. How important is it for these campuses to retain their own identity while still operating under, you know, a one college concept? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, it is important to be one college, you know, mm -hmm. to abide by the same policies and procedures to make sure all of the, the different areas are part of the strategic plan uh, of the college. That's really important. You don't want to have separate plans. You want them to be integrated and to be um, leveraging the, the college resources because it's important to be efficient and mm -hmm. to use our, our resources very wisely. Uh, at the same time, uh, my experience here in Iowa is very similar. We, I'm part of a multi-campus system where we have six campuses and we have um, uh, a number of other centers, about four different centers. In fact, I even have an, a center under my campus. That's how interesting mm -hmm. the, the world rolls. But if we were to do business uh, in the same way at my campus as we did, let's say, in Boone, Iowa, then we would not be successful in meeting the needs of our community. Right. So in my community where students are, are, are graduating from, from public school, where the majority of students are free and reduced lunch, uh, they may come from a English as a second language background, uh, that's really going to shape and inform what what I'm doing at my particular campus. Mm -hmm. And so looking at those individual uh, needs, making sure that the environmental scanning is not just on the county level and how we're serving the county of Bristol County, but also how we are serving those individual communities with mm -hmm. their unique needs. Well, Dr. Laura Douglas, we appreciate your time. Congratulations once again, and I look forward to meeting you in person sometime uh, early this summer. Thank you for joining thank, us. Thank you so much. This was delightful. Have a great day.